this works. I'm quitting myself so that I can improve myself is really what it comes down to. And this is also one of those types of lessons over the next few days. Um, these are those types of lessons that I think that if a parent asks, because this can be kind of a heavy conversation, if a parent's asking what's going on in this class, I'll have documentation and they can actually watch and see exactly what you guys are being told or being asked to do or whatever. Yesterday, I had you fill out what makes you you. And we started with the premise of I'm trying to get you to understand who you are and provide stepping stones for improvement, whether that means academically or your character based or just you as a person. Understand that it's a process of growth that we're going through. I told you that the next few days you're going to have a pretty heavy conversation. So I'm asking you to choose which type of ground you're going to be. I used the analogy the other day or yesterday about I'm like a farmer right now and I've got a bag of seeds and I'm throwing it out there. And I need you to decide what type of ground you're going to be. If you're going to be that rocky ground, then the conversation that I'm having with you is not going to mean much. It's going to sit there. It's going to fester. You're going to have this attitude. You're going to be like, why, Mr. Kimball, are we doing this? It has nothing to do with English. It has nothing to do with writing or reading or anything like that. It's just a waste of my time. And if that's all you're getting from it, then you're that stony ground. And none of what I'm going to say is actually going to take root in your life or grow. Some of you are going to be like the weedy ground, that you're going to allow it to come in a little bit, but you're also going to make decisions based on what you want to do anyway. You're the type of person, maybe, that you got to learn the hard way. So, yeah, you'll let some of this conversation happen. You'll get involved with it. That seed will take root. But you're also going to surround yourself with all kinds of influences that may not help you grow into the best person that you can be. One second. What I'm asking for and what I'm praying for is that you are this kind of a ground, that you are ready to receive it, you are willing to receive it, and you're going to do everything you can to nourish that and help these conversations grow you into the person that you were meant to be. Question? Okay, well, let me open my document. Okay, go to, go to your start menu, mm -hmm. and that search box, put the title in there, and it should find it from there. Okay, anybody else not able to open up their document? Okay, just quickly as I go through this presentation, let me alert you to kind of the organization tool that I put behind there. If you see this blue screen, you are just listening and kind of, you know, sometimes being involved in conversation, the back and forth with this. If you see a notebook screen, that's where you're typing and writing the information down. So yesterday when I had you write your writing assignment, what makes you you, I mentioned this is going to be a growing document based on the conversations that we're having. So I'm hoping that you just add information as it's pertinent to what we're talking about. Okay, does that make sense? So blue background, you're just listening, maybe involved in conversation with me. Notebook paper, that's where you should be typing or writing down. Okay, so let's get into some pretty heavy conversation. It's your choice what type of ground you're going to be. I can't change that. I absolutely understand some people are going to be here. That's okay. I understand some of you are going to be here. That's also okay. At least I'm going to fulfill what I feel like I need to do, and I'm going to have these conversations with you. All right. For sake of time, I need to go pretty fast. What do you notice about the people in these pictures? They all have something in common. Yes. Are they all happy? They're all happy, which is good. What else? They all have disabilities. Okay. So let me talk to you about the first idea that I want you to think about is know the reality of your life. In my background, I worked at a developmentally disabled home here in Jerseyville called June Court. Um, and it's over, you guys know June, June Street by the uh, city park? Go on the other side of the highway, you know where the two churches are? One of those houses over there is an eight bed facility that houses um, basically senior citizens that have developmentally, um, developmentally disabled situations. Some of them are very similar. None of these people, none of these four live there. I don't know them. I just did a Google search, found some pictures, put them on there for the conversation. The one in the bottom right, I'll actually spend a moment talking about him in just a second. 
I'm bringing these pictures to you because I worked with these people for four and a half years over at June Court, and I was one of the direct care people. I worked in the afternoon, so I did their cooking for them, I did a lot of their laundry for them, and then a lot of the direct care. Some of them could not even feed themselves, let alone use the bathroom and, and all that stuff. As I have this conversation with you, I'm going to tell you I'm going to a very uncomfortable place in just a second. Some of this I'm very passionate about, some of it is just absolutely disgusting. So be ready for what I'm about to tell you, okay? The biggest point is for you to understand that people have difficulties. Let me tell you about Ricky, let me tell you about Freddie, and then I'll introduce you to Ivan. Ricky. Ricky was very similar to this guy. He had cerebral palsy. He was at a point, he was in his mid-40s, his arms were curled up because his joints were already disabled, his muscles were being compacted a little bit. He could not stand up straight. When he had a walker, he was leaned over, you know, and used the walker like that. He had locked jaw, which means whenever he ate, he was able to feed himself, but sometimes his jaw would lock open and food would come out and we would have to take care of those kinds of things for him. The reason I'm telling you about Ricky, though, is more about his family. He was in a very structured, very positive family environment. They just literally got to a point, his brothers and sisters and parents, um, got to a point where he was too old for them to take care of him on a daily basis. And they had their own lives to live, too. But they were at the facility all the time. They took him home for holidays. They would come and just spend an evening with him. They were kind of the ideal family. You would want that, that love and support for this mid 40 year old man who just couldn't function on his own. His mental ability was very similar to you guys. He was about a 13, 14 year old guy mentally. One of the things that we learned early on in our training is that once these people learn something, they learn it and they are there. And then once they get to their max mental age, they're at that age for the rest of their life. So Ricky, even though he's in his mid 40s, he was mentally about a 13 and 14 year old person. So all of the thoughts, the puberty, the inappropriate stuff that he wanted to watch on television was very typical of like a 13 or 14 year old person. He just couldn't physically have conversations with people to get his ideas across or physically do some of the things that you and I take for granted every day. But he had a very loving family. His roommate though was named Freddie very different story. We used to call him Cinderfella, as the staff would kind of talk about him, because we did some research on his family, and it was horrible. You know the Cinderella story. You know the evil stepsisters. Transfer that to a guy. Let me go back a little bit. His life, he's 72 years old when I met him. When he was, when his mom became pregnant, she didn't want him. And this was long before abortion was legal. So she did the very disgusting practice of the coat hanger sweep. And she tried once to sweep her uterine lining. It did not work. He continued to grow inside of her. She tried a second time. It did not work again. She got to the point where she started to show. So. It brought attention to her. And obviously, it's something that you don't do those types of things, so she had to carry him full term. She died during labor. Freddie was born with the inability to control any of his internal functions. He could not control his bladder or his bowels. As she did the coat hanger sweep, she messed up his tissue so bad, he literally just had a big flap of skin with a hole. She messed him up mentally. He was never any older than a four or five year old. But he's 72 whenever I met him. When he was born, his dad had to take care of him. There's no place to send him. Nobody would want to adopt a kid like that. Dad was forced to take him. He married someone else, enter evil stepmom. She established a family situation where Freddie was the internal outcast. When guests would come over, when friends would come over, they literally treated Freddy like an animal and put him in the garage and put food on the floor for him to survive on his own. That's Freddy. He was not wanted. As soon as they can put him in an orphanage, they put him in an orphanage, disowned him, got rid of him, gave up legal custody of all of, 
all of his rights and everything. He eventually gets to the point where they put him in a nursing home. And if you know anything about nursing homes, especially in the 30s and 40s, which is where he started in the nursing home, they didn't have the staff that could take care of someone like Freddie. So he learned survival skills. When he was wet, when he was dirty, when he was hungry, when he just wanted to move from one chair to another chair, he learned that if he screamed at the top of his lungs, if he shook his chair, if he was self-abusive and biting himself, eventually someone would pay attention to him. When they had to give him a bath, they would get five or six nurse aides. They'd all grab a limb, and they would carry him to the public shower. They would hose him down, and they would put him back in bed or put him back in the chair horrible situation. So when I met Freddie, when he's 72 years old, he had already developed all of these survival skills. Self-abusive, screaming, all of that kind of stuff, because he was never in his life shown love and compassion. Ivan. Let me tell you about Ivan. This is my cousin. Ivan just started fourth grade. He's kind of okay, but he is in this category. When he was, when his mom was pregnant, his mom is my Aunt Pam, when she was pregnant in uh, around the Nashville, Tennessee area, they found out that she has cystic fibroids. Cystic fibroids are basically lumps on your uterine lining, and she had some that were pretty big, big enough to where the doctors were saying he will never be carried full term, abort him, abort him, and she refused and she refused. So this is Ivan just a couple of years ago. He's now in the Boy Scouts. He's very active. He does all kinds of things. But let me introduce you to the Ivan that I first met. The Ivan that I first met, the very first picture that I saw of him, and I know this is blurry here, but let me explain what this is. This is his face. He's covered in all kinds of tissues. He has cords running in and out of him. What I want to draw your attention to, there's Ivan's fingers, and that's his dad's hand. So take your hand real quickly, open it up, look at your thumbnail, and imagine an entire baby's hand spread out like that and fits there. This is not Ivan brand new. This is Ivan at almost a couple of months old, or at least a month old. So imagine a baby that small. He was born four months early. He was one pound, five ounces. He would literally fit in the palm of your hand. Don't take your fingers into account. The palm of your hand, he would fit there. That's how small this kid was. He was undone. He was not fully developed. This is Ivan. One of the early pictures where they could actually get him onto a cloth. Notice that everything around him is a different, it's a special cloth because his skin was underdeveloped still. You can still see through some of his skin. You see how red he is, you see how wrinkled he is, you see all of that. That's how he was born. That's how he came into this world. And the doctor said, he will never survive. He looks pretty good to me. This is his dad tickling him, playing with him. And this is me holding him at um, a family thing that we did down in Gatlinburg, Tennessee area. Okay? The reason I bring these three people to you is for you to understand the value of your life. Understand the reality of your life. A lot of you wake up every day and you take for granted. You get dressed. You roll out of bed. You have your breakfast if you have breakfast. You get on your laptops and your cell phones, and you, you just live every day without some of the struggles that some of these people have. I really believe that these types of people are put on this earth for God to test us. Are we the type of people that show and demonstrate love even to people we don't know? even to people who are seemingly unloved? Are we the type of people that continually push ourselves into other people's lives? I'm a teacher. That's one of the things that I'm doing. I'm pushing myself into your lives so that I can demonstrate love. I can be a motivator for a lot of you, okay? But I want you to understand, if nothing else for today's conversation, if nothing else for today's conversation, I want you to understand the reality of your life. And this is where you're typing just for a moment. I know we're almost done with our time today. Know the reality of your life. Don't take your life for granted. You have your faculties. You have your five senses intact. 
No matter what happens in your life, please understand, it could be much worse. Think about all the people who have really difficult situations. I didn't tell you about Ricky's dad and mom. When Ricky was in his 30s, his mom and dad went on a family vacation. They got hit by a semi-truck. She died instantly, and dad was left mentally worse than Ricky could ever think about being. It took a car accident to destroy another part of that family. You never know how your life is going to turn out. You're not even guaranteed today. God forbid anything happens to you. But you don't know. Think about how quickly your life can change. It could be worse. You really are special. I'm going to try to be one of those people in your life that's going to validate you. You have a purpose for being here. You have a reason for being here. Do you know it yet? I hope that over this semester, over this year, that you will start to identify your purpose, your life. You're able to decide what your life will be like. Freddie couldn't do that. Freddie could not decide what his life was going to be like. Even Ricky, who could think and who could act, there were lots of things Ricky had no control over. The family had to make decisions for him. You guys can make decisions that affect every aspect of your life. So, I'm going to end on that note. Know the reality of your life. Understand it could be worse. You have value. You have the ability to make choices. We're going to expand that conversation a little bit more tomorrow. Thank you for your attention. I'm going to leave that up. I'm going to shut this down. Mm -hmm.